Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Do you know that there is a divisional chart called the D10 chart? It is known as the Dashamsha chart. It is a very, very, very important chart for your profession. Not just your superficial career, but in general of the 10th house because that shows what will you do in life, okay? Mm, but today's video is on an even more special topic. What does the placement of Saturn in the D10, not in the D1, in the Dashamsha chart? Where is your Saturn? What does it tell about you and your profession? <laughs> It's a very important planet because Saturn is the Atma Karaka for the Dashamsha chart, okay, which means like for the Navamsha chart, which is D9, Venus is the Atma Karaka, right? And for Saptamsha chart, Jupiter is the Atma Karaka. So similarly for Dashamsha, Saturn is the Atma Karaka, which means he is probably, you could say, the most important planet in the D10. Of course, that does not mean that the other planets are not important, okay? But Saturn's importance cannot be uh, neglected in the Dashamsha and also in the D1, okay? Quick recap, what is Saturn? Well, uh, we know what Saturn is, but why is Saturn the Karaka for the, the Dashamsha chart? Why is, uh, sorry, the why is he the Atma Karaka for the Dashamsha chart? Because if you see the 10th house, you know, in general, you know, the 10th house of the Lagna chart, we know who are the Karakas, right? Mercury, then Sun, then Saturn. Some say also Jupiter, but primarily these three. Now, what does Mercury represent? Mercury represents skill, basically. 10th house is the house of uh, something big, basically. Okay, something massive, which makes you very famous. Now, to get fame, you need skill. Without skill... Why would somebody come to you? Why would somebody pay you anything? Why would somebody praise you, right? If you don't have skill. Then sun is the Karaka for the 10th house, which means sun represents name, fame, power, position, authority, limelight, administration, decision making. Now, if you cannot make good decisions in life in context of your profession, you know, if you cannot take risks, if you are not bold, if you are not assertive, you are not courageous, uh, then, uh, well, uh, you may not go, go that uh, far because in your profession, you might have to take big risks sometimes, okay, and you have to stick to your decision no matter what happens, okay, and you got to take responsibility. And then we have Saturn. What is Saturn? Saturn represents the hard work that we have to do when it comes to the uh, 10th house. Saturn represents the work that we do in the background. Okay, so imagine 10th house is like a house. You know, you go inside the house, you do something and then you come out. So the way you go inside is Mercury, which means first you need to have some skill. So you develop some skill and then you uh, become very expert in it. You become the best in your field. And then you go inside, okay? And once you go inside, what happens is you do hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work, okay? And then uh, when you do hard work for a long time, uh, you also develop some other skills, like, you know, you will know how to do smart work. You will know what works, what doesn't work, what should work, what will not work, okay? And then when you come out of that house, it's like uh, the sun's blessings are awaiting you, which means you, you are now experienced, you know, to take bold decisions and then you stick to your decisions, you know how to administer your uh, subordinates and then you get name and fame because of your decisions and because of your actions primarily. But... What people think is uh, that the 10th house is, you know, skill and name and fame. But what they don't understand is what goes on inside, which is, you know, a hell lot of hard work. So therefore, Saturn is the most important planet when it comes to the 10th house. Of course, uh, that does not mean, as I said, Mercury and Sun are not important, but Mercury uh, can give you some initial attraction, you know. So for example, uh, you have skill in a particular area 
but are you ready to practice you know are you ready to put in like you know 10 20 000 hours you know if yes then uh, you have the blessings of saturn and then later on when you put in the hours when you put in the effort then you can get experience and you can take some bold decisions and stick to it and then you get uh, name fame otherwise uh, you just uh, you, your life is just like a normal person you know you may not become very famous okay which is the uh, prerogative of the sun basically because the sun is the light he gives you name and fame right so therefore uh, when it comes to the 10th house saturn is maybe uh, in a sense more important than the sun and mercury because without saturn there is no there's no question of perfecting your skill which is mercury and without saturn there's no question of name fame because without saturn you are not dependable you you may be become famous you know you may be born in a big family you know uh, a rich family, wealthy family, uh, influential family. But if you do not do the hard work, you will see that you will not be able to carry that legacy. We see many uh, in, in India, you know, we see many politicians, you know, they their son, their daughter, they are born in that those big families due to some good past life karma. But then now when they have become the leaders of those political parties, you know, you can clearly see that that party is declining, dwindling and uh, just going nowhere. Similarly, with a lot of Bollywood and Hollywood stars, you know, their children, you will see they are not doing as great as their parents. OK, now, of course, this does not mean that uh, they have no value. But what I am trying to tell here is that it also does not mean that just because you're a father or mother was a politician or a Bollywood or Hollywood star, you also have to go into that domain. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to tell is here is that sometimes you may get name and fame because of your past life karma, which means you are born in a big family. Okay. You may get that initially and you may have some mercurial traits, you know, like for example, you might have connections. Okay. Like, you know, you are born in a rich family, you will have connection to other rich people. You are born in a film star family, you will have connection to directors, producers, you know, a political family, you will have connection to all leaders of all other political parties. You know, But uh, if you do not do the hard work, either it is that same profession of your parents or in some other profession, uh, you will have a tough time. Okay, so therefore, Saturn represents the base of the 10th house. Okay, he is a very important planet. And therefore, he is the Atma Karaka of the Dashamsha chart. And then you have to understand what the Dashamsha chart is. You know, uh, the Dashamsha chart is a very important chart. As I said, not just for your profession, but uh, your overall actions, you know, it is karma. It is the house of uh, chart of your karma. Okay, so every moment you are doing some karma. Like I am speaking now on karma, so this is also my karma. You are hearing this uh, video on karma. That is your karma. Okay, but uh, when we say karma, it is not just you know in some simplistic terms. You know, you are doing some. A routine activity no not in that sense you know you get up you take bath you eat and you go to office and you uh, go to sleep no in the, not in that sense but in a larger context you know like uh, what are you doing in the world for society and all this you know so for that you need to see the dashamsha chart okay and there saturn specifically represents the areas which you have to work explicitly, you know, you, you have to work very hard in those areas, wherever wherever Saturn is placed in your D10. You know, so for example, uh, if Saturn is in your fifth house of your Dashamsha chart, then it means that there is some level of uh, hard work or considerable hard work that you have to do when it comes to subordinates. Why? Because fifth house represents subordinates, right? Especially in the Dashamsha chart, the fifth house represents your subordinates. Now, what does it mean, subordinate? Subordinate means somebody is junior to you? Well, not necessarily. Uh, 
subordinates are those people who are dependent on you. So they can be your uh, senior and sometimes your, uh, sorry, they can be your junior or sometimes even your senior because your senior is also dependent on you, right? So therefore, uh, if Saturn is in the fifth house in your the Shamsha chart, then you have to understand the dynamics of uh, how to deal with subordinates, okay? How to be a good leader because fifth house is the original sign of the sun, which is Leo. So you will have to know, you will have to maneuver and you will have to figure out how can I delegate my tasks? How can I work responsibly? How can I give people the work that they are comfortable doing? And then you will understand that, yes, this is very important for me because, see, the 10th, the Lagna chart, your D1 chart will finally tell you what are you doing in life? Which means uh, if prominent planets in your D1 chart, they are linked with maybe your 10th house, for example, then you might be fully focused in your profession all the time. But then once you are focused in your profession, what is the most difficult area? How do we identify that? Because somebody may have three planets or four prominent planets, you know, sun, moon, lagna, lord in the 10th. But then you say, oh, yeah, you will focus on career, you know. Then the person is like, okay, but within career, which is the most important thing for me? For that, you should go to the D10 and you should check where Saturn is because if you can master the placement of Saturn in your D10, oh boy, you will have success. I have, I have seen this all the time. Like, for example... Saturn in the second house in D10. All the time I have seen. You, you open a chart with Saturn in second house in D10. I don't care what the person is doing. I don't care what the D1, D9, D60, whichever D, E, F, G, H divisional chart says what. But if your Saturn is in the second house in the Dashamsha chart, you have to have an understanding of finances. You may not be in the finance industry. You may not be a fancy finance YouTuber. You may not be in fintech. You may be into sports, for example, which will come from the D1. But you will have to use mathematics all the time because second house is calculation. It is mathematics, okay? It is the initial things that you learn when you experience start experiencing this world in your childhood and one of the first things that we learn is counting numbers mathematics that is fundamental so therefore if you have saturn in the second house in d10 then you need to understand that no matter what you do in life if you do not master the art of calculation and numbers not that you have to be like a super uh, computer, you know, oh, this multiplied by this, how much it should. But you should know how to do it. You may not know it yourself, but you should have a good system, you know, a good calculator or you, you should learn MS Excel or whatever, you know, like some AI tools, some Python, which can help you in calculations. You should learn probability, statistics, variance, uh, standard deviation, all these things you should learn. Even if you are in, uh, in into uh, graphics designing or into interior design, you will still have to learn because otherwise what will happen? You will keep doing mistakes in calculation. You will keep doing mistakes when it comes to numbers. You will keep doing mistakes when it comes to the final uh, money calculation. Otherwise, and then all, all the things will be uh, spoiled because you will not be able to go to the next level if you keep doing this. If you do not understand numbers calculations and mathematics and as i said it doesn't mean that you will like to do it you may hate doing it but you will still have to learn to do it or get it done through someone so if you have saturn in the second house in your d10 and you are very bad at calculations <clears throat> you don't like calculations or both you are terrible at calculations and you hate it then please hire somebody you know, pay some money to somebody to do that work for you. Otherwise, 
it will wreak havoc in your profession. Okay, otherwise, what not you do, you will not be able to go to that next level. Similarly, if it is in your third house in detail, you know, you have to use some form of negotiation, some consulting, some technology. Even if you are in the hotel business, you will have to make an app. You will have to do it. I don't care what you are doing. Even, even if you are playing racing, you have to do some consulting there. <laughs> now, what, which aspect of the third house it will be? Well, that will depend on the chart, you know, what the D1 is saying, what the skills in the D9 are, you know, what, what is your D10, you know, so all that will vary, but something related to the third house you have to to do on a daily basis and that is something you have to master either by yourself or by outsourcing it. <laughs> that is where you will face a lot of challenges and not in a derogatory sense, you know, that, oh, it's challenges, you know, no, no, in a good sense, you know, oh, that's a challenging area for me. But if I work on it, oh, my, oh wow, I will get humongous gain. So, Please work on wherever Saturn is placed in your Dashamsha chart. That area will be the root cause of your success or failure. Okay. And again, at the end, all these things that I said has to be seen with the D1 chart. If you just like, you know, if you just see, oh, my Saturn is here in D10, you know, what will happen? No, nothing happens like that. You have to first see what's going on in the D1. The D1 will tell you what kind of a profession you might have. That the D10 will not tell you. That the D1 will tell you. So first, you should identify from the D1 what kind of profession can this person have and what kind of profession will he or she be good at. Then you see the D9. How much of these things which the D1 is telling, how much of these are the is the person carrying from the last lifetimes? So how much hard work does the person have to do? So for example, if the D1 is telling you, you will be into politics, for example, then you have to see the D9 to confirm. If the D9 is not saying that, then it means you have to start from the grassroots, which is again not bad, but it's a lot of hard work. Okay. And then you see the D10. Okay, in the D10, you know, you your Saturn may be in the second house, as I said. So that means even though you are a politician, you have to be very uh, knowledgeable about numbers. You know, who is winning how many seats where? Okay, who is, who is winning how many votes? Of course, that's the prime job of a politician. But you have to know calculation. Otherwise, uh, you will suffer. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, that will be all from my side. Thank you very much for your patience. If you're new, then subscribe and hit the thumbs up if you like this video, which I'm sure you would have already liked. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. And if you want any consultation from me, then my website is down in the description section. Thank you.